Sir, you are muted. Sorry. So uh, whatever I said so far, probably nobody heard. Yeah. Okay. So let me let me start again. Okay. So last time we saw uh, uh, this regular representation, and uh, uh, we saw that uh, uh, how to decompose the regular re representation. So n1 v1. Uh, so we can write it as n1 v1 plus n m v n, where n uh, v i s are irreducible representations uh, of uh, dimension and degree n i, which is same, which means its dimension is n i. Yeah. And so, uh, and from this we. We get this corollary which says that the character of the regular representation is same as uh, uh, the sum of the sum of uh, these characters, yeah, n one chi v one plus n m chi v n, where v i is are all irreducible representation of G of uh, degree n i. Degree n i means the dimension of v i is n. And then from this we saw that if we plug in identity. Uh, so if we evaluate these characters at identity, we get this uh, this uh, equation, uh, which uh, which somehow uh, will help us figure out all the um, uh, dimensions of irreducible representations in in smaller uh, in groups of small size. And then we also, if you plug in, uh, if you evaluate this this equation at some element which is not identity. Then you see the left hand side is zero, yeah, and the right hand side is same as uh, the left hand side here. Yeah, it's same as this this equation. So 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 what we get is this equation for g different from identity. And we will see how these uh, these equations are useful when we are trying to work out some examples. Okay. So, the, so there are some, uh, uh, yeah, so the, one could also refine these equations a little bit, but uh, let me not get into it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, um, um, but this, uh, this much is uh, good enough for whatever calculation I want to do. And last time we also saw that if we consider the space of class functions on a group G, so we saw that this has dimension same as, uh, yeah, uh, the number of uh, number of uh, conjugacy classes on or, or so the space is basically sp uh, space of complex values functions which are constant on each conjugacy class of G. That is what H is. So we saw that this uh, this is generated by uh, so this is this has an orthonormal basis consisting of irreducible characters. So we already saw uh, that uh, the the characters. Uh, Irreducible characters are orthogonal, and their norm is one. So last time we are, and uh, and after that we showed that uh, this uh, uh, the, and these irreducible characters actually span the in the whole of H. Yeah? And as a consequence, we got that uh, the number of irreducible representations of uh, of G is same as the number of conjugacy classes in G. Yeah? So if you know, so given any group, maybe you can compute all the conjugacy classes and uh, you count all the conjugacy classes. That's the number of irreducible representations you can get. Okay. So this is more or less where we stopped last time. And then in the, in the um, afternoon session, we observed this, uh, uh, this fact that uh, uh, G is abelian. So we already saw that G is abelian implies every irreducible representation is one dimensional. That was one of the exercises done. So even the converse is true. And it follows from this previous corollary. So what does it say, uh, mean to say G is abelian? That precisely means that every conjugacy class in, uh, uh, so the number of conjugacy class in G is precisely the order of G. So every singleton element is a conjugacy class. Yeah? It's abelian means it commutes with every, every guy. Yeah, so there is only uh, so if you look at a conjugacy class, it contains exactly one element. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, which is same as saying the number of conjugacy classes in G is say, is same as the order of G. Yeah, but uh, but by the above corollary, that means that there are order of G irreducible representations of of G. Yeah, so the the so this. Uh, so the, this currently tells us that uh, number of conjugacy classes, uh, the, the, the order of G irreducible representations of, 
of of g. Yeah. So if the g is irreducible representation, then each of them must be one dimensional. Yeah, because we we also know that uh, we uh, it has to satisfy this equation. Yeah. So summation. Uh, so say say each of these irreducible representations have dimension n i, then n i square i equals one to g should be same as order of g, where n i's are greater or equal one. But uh, not. for that to happen, each of these n i's must be one. Yeah, so that tells us that all irreducible representations are one dimension. Okay, so these two are again equivalent. So that proves this uh, that uh, the converse are, is also true. Okay, is that is that fine? Yeah, so I think I gave this argument uh, even in the afternoon yesterday. So let's uh, let's look at uh, some examples now. Yeah. So maybe we'll start with some abelian, so cyclic example, yeah? So, uh, so maybe mu n. So what are all the irreducible characters of mu n? So mu n is a... Okay. So mu n is a cyclic group. So in fact, uh, irreducible characters and irreducible representations, they're all same, yeah? In fact, characters and... Uh, uh, because uh, irreducible... It's abelian group, so all its irreducible representations are one dimensional. And as soon as you have one dimensional representation, the character and representations are same. Yeah. So uh, same as uh, sorry, mu n one dimension as same as one dimensional one dimensional mu n representation. Yeah. And how does it look like? So if if mu n is sigma where sigma power n is one, so it's isomorphic to Zn, Z, Z mod n Z, then um, uh, you can, def uh, so giving a representation or character is to give uh, a complex number for each of these uh, elements of the group. Yeah, so you assign um, to sigma e power two pi i L over n, so some, some nth root of unity, L is some number between zero and n minus one. And then of course, uh, then sigma power j has to go to to power i l j over n because chi l in this case is a group homomorphism. Yeah, so if sigma goes to this, then sigma power j goes to j -th power. L. So, um, so you so chi l is an irreducible representation. If you put l equals zero, then uh, what you get is one. Yeah, everything is one. So it, it's a trivial representation. If you put l equals one, then you get some non-trivial representation, and so on. So, so for each L between zero and N minus one, you get, uh, get to one representation. So uh, one irreducible representation. So there, uh, there are N irreducible representation. The first one is trivial and the rest one are whatever they are. Yeah, and they are this explicit, uh, explicitly written. So you can write irreducible representations explicitly uh, as homomorphisms from mu N to uh, C star, yeah, and this is not uh, this is not just for cyclic group. It's true for any abelian group. Yeah, the set of irreducible characters is is basically a set of all one dimensional uh, one dimensional representations of G for G abelian group. Yeah, and uh, hence uh, uh, and that one dimensional representation is basically the collections of homomorphism from G to C star. Yeah. Uh, so in fact, you can write it as homomorphism from G to com C uh, uh, the, uh, to the to this uh, circle, yeah, complex circle. So that's uh, so that I'm denoting by C sup uh, Z equals one. So what it means is those complex numbers whose absolute value is one. So in, uh, you can even make it smaller. What the do domain because we know that the image lies in 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 this. Uh, our uh, image has to lie on this circle. Okay. So anyway, so mm, uh, the set of irreducible characters is precisely precisely this group, which is same as this group. Okay. So for abelian groups, uh, in general, we understand all the irreducible characters. We can more or less write down all the irreducible characters. Okay. And they are all one dimensional uh, representations, yeah? So now, uh, um, so the main uh, 
contribution of representation. So, so these things uh, come under the ambit of group theory. So you can understand as a group as well. I mean, these are very nice. So they are all abelian groups. So they are, I mean, you can think of it as modules and stuff like that over Z. So every, the theory is very nice. So the, you don't really need uh, to understand this complicated theorems of representation theory to understand these things. So the real um, uh, benefit of representation theory is uh, when we study uh, non-abelian groups. Yeah? So let's study the simplest non-abelian groups. So which is the simplest non-abelian group? It's, it's S3, right? That, that is the smallest non-abelian group. So let's try to study S3. So S3 is uh, the symmetric group on three, three letters. So it's generated by maybe one, two, and one, two, three. So it has, it has six elements, identity one, two, one, one, three, and uh, two, three, one, two, three, and three, two, one. Yeah. So, so maybe one, two is a transposition, which maybe I'll denote it by tau, and one, two, three is a, three cycle, which may be all denoted by sigma, okay? So S3 is this, and uh, we want to find out all the irreducible representations of S3, okay? So uh, of course, every, every group has a trivial representation, one dimensional trivial representation, yeah? So it has, that irreducible representation is always there. Yeah, so maybe first, maybe we will calculate how many irreducible representation S3 has. So for that, we'll have to calculate the number of conjugacy classes. So for S3 or in general SN, we know how to compute the conjugacy classes, yeah. But S3, so one is the identity is the conjugacy class. And then it depends upon how the shapes of this uh, cycle, yeah. In the disjoint cycle decomposition, the shapes determine the conjugacy classes. So one conjugacy class is identity, which is always there. Then transposition is a conjugacy class. So one, two, two, three, and uh, one, three. They are they are in the same conjugacy class. And then three cycles are also of uh, three cycles form a conjugacy class. So one, two, three, and three, two, one. These two elements are in the third conjugacy class. And these are all the, the all the conjugacy class. Yeah, is that okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so that tells us uh, we should have three irreducible representation for S3, yeah? So one is, of course, the trivial irreducible representation, which I, which I told you. So we want to figure out two other irreducible representation of S3, yeah? So we can also find the dimension. So yeah, yeah. So one will be one two dimension, and one will be one dimension. Yeah, exactly. So we know that formula. Yeah. So say so, and let's call this n uh, maybe n zero. Yeah, n one and n two be the de degrees of these irreducible representation. Oh, so I've called one, uh, so this has one. Yeah. <coughs> so some of the squares, <coughs> so some of the squares of these irreducible re representation should add up, add up to six. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So, uh, so that tells you that one plus a square plus b square, where a is supposed the, um, the, uh, the degree of, of, uh, this uh, missing irreducible representation, maybe call it chi one, and uh, uh, C B is the degree of the third irreducible representation chi two. So that equals six. That means a square plus b square has to be five. So that's possible only if you put uh, one of them to be one and the other one to be two. Yeah. So let's say a is one and b is two. So there are two more irreducible representation, but one of them has to be one dimensional and the other um, two dimensional, yeah? So in fact, um, uh, to get all the one dimensional representation, all we have to do is find out all the homomorphisms from S3 to C star, yeah? So these are always uh, one dimensional, uh, th these will always give you one dimensional representation. And since they are one dimensional, by definition, they are irreducible. Yeah? But uh, in, in when group is non-abelian, then uh, these are not all the irreducible. 
maybe some more. So what? Uh, so we know one home. Uh, so we already found one homomorphism from uh, from S three to C star, which is the trivial homomorphism. The other one, if you remember, is the sign. Yeah. So uh, the map is uh, you send uh, um, send a permutation to the sign of the permutation. Yeah. You write it as product of transpositions, and uh, if the number of transpositions in that product is uh, odd, then you give the value minus one. If the number of transposition is uh, even, then you put it one. Yeah. So the sign sign is so so everyone knows this, right? The sign map from um, S N two C star. Yes. So, so in fact, the, the value will take uh, it takes is one or minus one. So, so that's a and that's a group homomorphism. So that gives you another. Uh, so that gives you one-dimensional uh, representation, which is different from the trivial representation. So that's the second irreducible representation. Yeah. So and then uh, the third irreducible representation is two-dimensional. Yeah. So we have to figure out this third guy. Yeah. So first, what we can do is figure out its character. So once we know the character, maybe we will then work out and try to figure out what is the what is the representation. So the character we can compute using um, uh, using those uh, equations which I wrote down in the beginning. So character, the value of the character on identity is of course two because it's the the dimension of the representation is two. Yeah? Now uh, what will happen for the transposition? So, so we need to know what it takes values on transpositions and three cycles. Then we are done. So remember, we had this equation that, uh, yeah. So we can use this. Yeah, transposition is not identity. So, uh, so n one plus chi transposition, uh, chi one of chi zero of transposition, and chi one of uh, n two times chi two of transposition plus n three times I three of transposition must be zero. Yeah, so that is what I'll use. Yeah, so as you can see, um, uh, chi zero of the transposition plus chi one of the transposition. So the coefficients are one because they are one dimensional. Plus two times chi two of the transposition because uh, dimension of chi, uh, this representation, the third representation is two, must be zero. Uh, what is the value of what is chi zero of the transposition? One. One. Yeah, it's the trivial representation. So maybe I can make a table here. No. So it's called the character table. Yeah. So there are three guys uh, or three conjugacy classes, uh, transpositions, and uh, and uh, uh, three cycles. Yeah. And uh, then um, uh, the, the three, so since there are three uh, conjugacy classes, there are going to be three representation. This is the trivial one. This is the all sign one, SGN. And then maybe chi two. So maybe this also will be called chi one, yeah? And chi two. So, so chi two, is, uh, uh, is so the values here is this is one this is one this is two yeah just the dimension of the representation and this we saw is uh, this we computer is one one what is chi one of the transposition minus one minus one yeah because it's the sign yeah so sign uh, sign of a transposition is minus one and sign of a three cycle is one one yeah so we get this <laughs> So now uh, uh, this equation tells us that chi two of the transposition must be zero, yeah, because one plus one is one, one plus minus one is zero. So chi two of two times chi two of tau is zero. So chi two of tau must be zero. And what should be chi two of uh, three cycle? Should be minus one, yeah. I mean, you apply the same thing, replace tau by three cycle here. So you get one plus one plus two, uh, two times some uh, something here. Should be same as zero, so that uh, that thing must be minus one. Yeah, is this okay? Uh, the character of of the 
uh, irreducible representation, th the third missing irreducible representation. So we at least know the character. Yeah, we don't know what the representation. So uh, we still have to do some work. Yeah, we don't know what the representation is. Representation means we have to give a map from S3 to GL to C. Yeah. So that we haven't done. Uh, so whose character will be same as Chi2. So that we haven't done, but uh, we, are, we have at least computed the character of the missing irreducible representation. So we have the whole character table. And then if you want some representation, yes. If you consider the permutation representation, mm -hmm. uh, that will be three dimensional. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so in that uh, we had seen a one dimensional subspace, right? Yeah. Which was so, invariant. So its complement would be the yeah, exactly. I think its complement should be the same. Yeah, yeah. So you that is how you can compute uh, compute the missing representation. Yeah. So, uh, so remember S3, uh, you look at the action of S3 on one, two, three, yeah, on this, uh, this set one, two, three. So that leads to a permutation representation. So it will give you an action of uh, S3 on C3, a linear action on C3. And what is that action? So, you know, it, uh, the basis is Z1, Z2, Z3, and um, the way sigma in S3 acts is it permutes the basis. So it will take one to sigma one, uh, two to sigma two, and uh, three to sigma three. Yeah, so this is the permutation representation of S3 on, on the set one, two, three. Okay, so this has, uh, uh, this uh, um, this is a three dimensional representation, and as uh, uh, someone pointed out, it has a subspace which is uh, uh, it has a sub representation which is uh, which is one dimensional. In fact, it's uh, it's an invariant subspace. Yeah? So you consider uh, the diagonal, yeah, in C three, which is uh, the line um, z z z where z is in C. Yeah, so the diagonal line. So if you apply sigma to any element in 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 L, then it doesn't change. Yes. So so in in fact L is fixed by whole of S three. So uh, so in fact uh, what you can say is that L is equal to um, C three uh, C three of S three. Yeah. So this is the fixed fixed subspace. So in particular, it's it's a it's a sub representation. Yeah. So you you quotient out uh, this C three by L, or uh, so you can write C three as L plus some some other representation. Yeah. That representation, this uh, uh, so this the uh, so that representation is precisely so the complementary representation you can write it as z1 z2 z3 equals uh, uh, those those complex numbers such that the sum is uh, sum is zero yeah. so first of all it's a common complementary dimensional subspace yeah because they inter uh, it's, it's two dimensional because there are three equation, uh, th three unknowns and one equation. So it's a two dimensional space and its intersection with L is zero. So it's a complementary dimensional subspace. And uh, you can see that if you apply sigma to, to this, uh, this uh, subspace, then it, the element still lands in, in this, yeah? Because you know, the sigma just permutes these numbers. So uh, these Z1, Z2, Z3, so the sum will always be, uh, no matter how you permute it, it, the sum will always be zero. So, so this this subspace, so this subspace, uh, this subspace uh, is 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 a sub representation, sub representation of S three. Okay. And um, then, uh, so it's a two-dimensional sub-representation, uh, two-dimensional representation of S3. So one has to still do some work, yeah? One has to figure out, uh, show, the, uh, so, uh, so and the claim is that this, uh, this is irreducible, yeah? And hence it, it has the same character as the other, yeah? So, uh, or, or maybe you can do the other way. You can compute the character of this irreducible representation and show that it is it is same as this, and that will prove that this must be an irreducible representation. 
yeah because i mean character determines the representation that theorem we know so maybe this is not a bad exercise so let's try to do uh, compute the character of uh, this representation directly yeah so what is the character of this uh, the c3 representation so chi of identity so maybe maybe we'll call this uh, 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 let's, uh, let's call this p yeah because it's a permutation representation so so mm, we are trying to compute character of the permutation representation so uh, this what is this number this is straightforward to figure out yeah so what is that sir we want to compute the character of p or character on restricted to this subspace ha huh. so we want to do this but uh, but uh, it will be easier to so we know how to compute the character of the permutation representation so let's try to do that first yeah the and first one is 3 the yeah so this is 3 yeah and uh, because it's the dimension of the representation what about uh, uh, tau 1 Why is that? Because only fixed point is z three. Yeah, because it fix. So you take any transposition one two. So one two will interchange one uh, one and two, and the only fixed point is three. Yeah. So it fixes only one guy. So this must be one. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, so? And from here maybe what is chi p of uh, the three cycle? Zero. so that uh, i don't know what did i sigma was the notation for three cycle yeah so this must be zero because three cycle doesn't fix anything yeah sigma is the three cycle so uh, uh, so this is the character of uh, of the permutation representation what is the character of l that will be one for every yeah so this is this is the trivial representation because because it is fixed yeah there is no action of uh, the, the the action of s3 on l is trivial yeah, so this is 1 1 and 1 yeah and from here we can compute the character of uh, this third represent uh, the mm, this uh, this representation right it's just the difference because this uh, character of uh, 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 let's give this a name yeah let's call it w okay so the character of w is just the difference of these two yeah is 2 uh, w of uh, tau sorry tau is 0 and uh, this uh, this is minus 1 Right up to a sigma is minus one, yeah. Because these two should add up to give you the character of the permutation. Yeah. So, so that is why I I said let's try to compute because this one uh, the L we know, right? So then it becomes sort of easy. Otherwise, one has to figure out what is the action and so on. So it uh, so is even in this case even that is not. Too bad, but still, it's a bit of work. But this is uh, this is sort of straightforward. Okay, and this is precisely the character of uh, the third irreducible representation. Yeah, two zero minus one. So that is the number two zero minus one. So that tells you that this uh, this is this is indeed the irreducible representation of dim of uh, dimension two of S three. Okay, is th is that okay? so everyone is uh, convinced that we have understood all the irreducible representations of s3 yeah yes sir uh, so so now if i give uh, so now if uh, someone asks you to come uh, find out uh, certain representations of uh, s3 um then you can you can just do it yeah so if if they tell you to give give you all uh, all all let's say five dimensional representations of s3 you can combine these things and get all the five dimensional representations of s3 yeah or any if someone gives you any any representation of s3 any finite dimensional representation of s3 then you can you can decompose it into the sum of irreducible representations 
all you have to do is so if they give you a representation then you compute its character yeah and uh, then you do the inner product business and you can decompose yeah so that is the advantage once you have this character table then uh, then you can do all that uh, very easily okay so that's s3 so let's uh, look at the next more complicated next uh, can you can you elaborate this point a little bit which point yeah. And that you can decompose any five any other dimensional yeah one so example yeah um, yeah so it's difficult to give an example yeah because um, um, yeah, so other than maybe regular uh, difficult in the sense I'll have to give you the representation and but I'll, I'll tell you ab abstractly how to do yeah so say uh, uh, say V is a representation of S three yeah GLV where v is maybe some some dimension yeah n dimensional n dimension v and d dimension yeah and uh, um, this is this uh, representation rule yeah so you can what you have to do is uh, you have to calculate chi of uh, chi v yeah so e you know what it's going to be yeah it's, it's d so you'll have to calculate chi v of the transposition so you look at the transposition and uh, compute its trace, yeah? So you look at the transposition, you look at rho v of the transposition. So you are given this representation means you, you are given this homomorphism, yeah? So once you are given this homomorphism, that means you are given this uh, linear transformation for tau and for three cycle, yeah? So you, you compute the uh, uh, this thing, this will be some number, yeah? A. Yeah. And uh, similarly, chi v of uh, uh, maybe let's call it alpha because a is somewhere floating around here. Chi v of sigma is beta. Yeah, some complex numbers. Yeah. So actually, in this case, um, I think they are they will all be integers, not complex numbers, but uh, never because uh, somehow the irreducible characters are like that. So it will be integers. But a priori, they are only complex numbers. So now, once you have this thing, so what do you do? You compute this chi v uh, inner product chi zero. Yeah. Yeah. And so that will be a that will be an integer. Yeah. Uh, actually, a natural number, and uh, the number of times this. Uh, uh, so let's call this. Yeah. And similarly, or let's call it chi i and n i, depending upon the three ones, yeah, chi zero, chi one, chi. So if you get these n i's, then what you can say is v is n zero, um, the trivial representation. So I don't know, um, did I name the trivial representation? I didn't name the trivial. Let's call it v zero, yeah, plus uh, n one v1 which is v1 is also one dimensional representation which is given by this uh, sign thing yeah and then the third one is n n2 and this we had named w yeah so v you can write it as uh, as this yeah so v0 v so as a, as an isomorphism it will be v0 is uh, yeah, v is isomorphic to so v is isomorphic to v0 power n0 direct sum v1 power n1 dx sum v2 uh, w power n2 okay so these are uh, this is this is how you can write write down any representation up to isomorphism is that okay yeah okay yeah so one can do this calculation very explicitly hmm. if you if you know the representation so that is what i mean <coughs> So next example is of dihedral groups. Yeah. So in dihedral group, remember. So uh, so I denoted by D n, whose order is two n, two n. Yeah. So what it does is it acts on n. So the I mean one can write the the two ways of uh, the the many ways of thinking about it, but uh, you can think of it as rotation and for n is generated by two elements R and S. R, you can think of it as rotation and S as reflection. Yeah? So R power N is one, S square is one, and RS is equal to SR inverse. So this is, this is, these are the relations which R and S satisfy. Yeah? So it has, it has two, two N elements. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so this contains, yeah, so uh, alpha n is identity, yeah. So I don't have to do, yeah, so alpha g and s alpha g. And you can, so, so if you think of it as, um, uh, so acting on this polygon, n, n polygon, then what it does is, uh, this r does a rotation and uh, s does a flip, yeah. So you can also think of it as a subgroup of SN because it permutes these one to N uh, vertices. So DN, you can also think of it as a subgroup. Of so there are many ways of thinking about DN, but uh, anyway, so this is uh, this is the group and we want to understand all its uh, irreducible representation, yeah? So to understand all this, first we will, uh, all this irreducible representation, first step is figure out all the one dimensional irreducible because that's easier to do. They are they are in bijection with group homomorphisms from D n to C star. Yeah. So um, so so those are exactly home D n C star. Yeah. So they are in bijection with these things. So if you take a group homomorphism from D n to C star, so D n looks like this. Yeah. Uh, so so. Uh, so of course, S, S square is identity. Yeah. So phi uh, this this map from D n to C star should, uh, if it is a group homomorphism, then it has to take S square to one. Yeah. So phi of S square is one. Also, phi of R square must be one. Why is that? So it should satisfy this relation. So phi of uh, R s must be equal to phi of S R inverse, yeah? Because R S and S R inverse are same in D N, yeah? But this implies that uh, phi of R times phi of S is same as phi of S times phi of R inverse, which maybe we can write it as inverse, we can put it outside, yeah? But uh, but C star is abelian, yeah. Is is C star is complex numbers, so this order doesn't matter, yeah. So what you get is uh, you multiply by phi r both sides, then you get phi r square is same as uh, and phi s cancels out, yeah. So phi r square is one. So that is, that tells you that phi of r square must be one, okay. So, so uh, if phi is a group homomorphism from D n to C star, then then S uh, S square has to go to one, and R square has to also go to one. So, so there are not too many choices. So S can go to plus one or minus one, and R can also go to plus one or minus one maximum. Yeah. So, so this gives us two cases. Okay. So if n is even. Then of course, uh, phi of R can be both uh, one or minus one, both possibilities are there because R power N, uh, N is even, yeah? So N is two times N, so R square can go to, uh, go to one. And S of course always can be both plus or minus one. So there are, so there are four one dimensional representation of TN, which I have denoted it by here, yeah? So there, are, someone is, uh, Constantly speaking. Uh, maybe Arunava, can you? Yeah. So, okay. so, so there are four one-dimensional. So when n is even, you get four one-dimensional representation uh, you know, because there are four group homomorphisms. Uh, you send uh, the first one sends both R and S to one. The second one sends R to minus one, uh, uh, S to S to one. Third one sends uh, R to one and S to minus one. And the fourth one sends both R and S to minus one. Yeah. So, so the, and they, they do define a group homomorphism from D and to C star, okay. So they will correspond to four irreducible uh, one-dimensional representations of D. But what happens if N is odd? If N is odd, then, you know, R, R power some odd number has to be one, yeah? So that tells you that R, uh, R cannot be minus one, yeah? The phi of R cannot be minus one because if it was minus one, then phi of R power some odd number will again be minus one, 
but fee of r power some odd number must be uh, this whatever that order is and fee of r power n must be one yeah so that tells you that for r in odd case uh, for r there is only one possibility which is which is one because minus one is ruled out <coughs> for s again there are two possibilities so so in this uh, so in in n equals odd odd case there are two one dimensional irreducible representation which may be, uh, I mean, um, is C0 and C2, right? Because, uh, so both R, uh, so R has to go to one. And so in, in C0, S must be one. And uh, uh, C2, S must, um, S must be minus one and R, R must be one. Yeah? So C0 and C2, this, uh, these two extends to a group homomorphism of, uh, of d n to c star if n is odd. Yeah? So here you have two one-dimensional irreducible representation of d. Okay, so that uh, that tells us all the one-dimensional representation. Is that okay for one-dimensional representation? Whatever I said. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Good. So now, now higher dimensional representation. Yeah. So, um, okay, so here, first of all, you know, dn contains the cyclic group, yeah, and uh, this, sorry, here, R, uh, so dn contains a abelian subgroup generated by R, yeah, which has index two in it, yeah, That's, so abelian group generated by R is a cyclic group of order n, and dn has order two n, so it has index two in it, uh, uh, two in the in the in the abelian group has index two in dn, yeah. So that tells you that all the irreducible representations of dn has to be bounded by the index of this group. So I mentioned this earlier, though we haven't seen a proof. So maybe maybe towards the end of the class, if there is time, I'll tell you I'll tell you a proof, or I will do it in the maybe we'll do it in the. In, um, in the session, in the afternoon session. Yeah? The proof of uh, the fact that, uh, uh, of this fact, which I just mentioned. Yeah? So that tells you that uh, every other irreducible representation of dn must be two dimensional. Yeah? Because we have counted all the one dimensional. So the only possibility is two dimensional representation. So let's try to figure out uh, all the two dimensional irreducible representation of dn. So again, the, uh, we have to do two different cases, even case and odd case. So remember, so there are four one-dimensional representation. And suppose that A, two-dimensional irreducible representation of dn. Then four plus four times A is going to be two n by that formula, yeah? So, uh, so for each one-dimensional representation, you get one square plus one square plus one square. So that is one, uh, four, four times one, which is four. And for each two-dimensional representation, you get two square four plus two square four. So four, 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 eight times. Yeah. So that is how you get the left-hand side. And that sum should be same as the order of the group, which is, which is two. Yeah. So, so this is how we, we get that equation using using that uh, summation n i square is uh, is the order of g so for using this one uh, we get uh, we get this equation okay so from here we can compute how many two dimensional irreducible representations are there so you just solve for a so it has to depend upon n yeah dn also dn itself depends on n so what you what we get is that uh, so you factor out of four, one plus a is same as n over two. So n is even, so this number makes sense. So a must be n over two minus one, yeah? So there are these many two-dimensional irreducible representation. If in the even case, when n is even, yeah? And in the odd case, there are two one-dimensional irreducible representation, then there's four times a, um, now uh, is the uh, is the uh, contribution from all the two dimensional irreducible representation and uh, and we get this equation this time yeah and from here if you solve for a you get uh, a is equal to n minus one over two so n is odd so n minus one is even over two is is going to be a number so so this uh, this makes sense yeah so here a is the number of irreducible representation when 
in the odd case. Is that okay? The, uh, so the number of irreducible representations we calculated, yeah? So in the even case, it is four. And in the, uh, four, it's a four plus N over, or uh, N over two plus three, yeah, in the even case. And in the odd case, it's N minus one over two plus two. So of course, this number, these numbers, one could also calculate using the conjugacy classes, yeah. So you have to compute all the conjugacy classes in, in the dihedral group. And, uh, uh, and um, um, that number will also give you, uh, give you this thing. Yeah? So that, uh, that is one of the homework problems. So maybe uh, this you will see in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, so maybe um, you compute, uh, so yeah, I, maybe I don't know, I will show you how to compute all the conjugacy classes and he'll show you that it, the number matches. Yeah. So that tells you um, all, the, all the irreducible, um, how all the irreducible representations will look like. In fact, uh, yeah, uh, so for one dimensional, the representation itself is the character. So here I haven't told you the character yet, yeah? So, for, uh, so in fact, in, instead of telling you the character, there is a natural action of D, Dn on, on C2, yeah, which is, uh, which is this uh, rotation and flipping. Yeah? So we'll use this natural action to give you all the representations, all the two-dimensional irreducible representation itself. And once you know all the two-dimensional irreducible representation, you can calculate the character easily. Okay. So, uh, so let's look at this, uh, this particular two-dimensional representation, yeah? So R, R, is, R has order N, yeah? And it's, it's a rotation. So how does the rotation look like? So it has to rotate uh, this complex plane by, by some angle, uh, and that angle must be some multiple of two pi i over N because R has order N, yeah? And S, uh, S is about flipping, and this matrix does the flipping. Yeah. So, so you define this map Vk, which sends R to the kth power of 2 pi i over n, yeah, this, uh, and call this matrix Rk. Yeah. So on the diagonal entries is 2 pi i k over n, uh, e power minus 2 pi i k over n, 0, 0. On the off-diagonal is 0, 0. So this is... Uh, this is similar to, you know, cosine 2 pi i. So I hope these things you know, yeah? 2 pi i k over n, uh, sine 2 pi i k over n, and so on, yeah, minus cosine. So the, you remember that uh, rotation matrix. So this matrix and that matrix are similar. Just um, you change your basis and you get this, yeah. So, uh, so the phi k, we, you send it to this guy, yeah, to this r k. And S, you send it to this uh, this matrix, which will which will denote by capital S. Yeah. So uh, so my claim is that phi k does extend to a group homomorphism. Yeah. Uh, of of D and D to N. Yeah. So so maybe I'll write down. So what what was D N? D N was uh, generated by. Uh, this one okay. D N was generated by two guys. Uh, it consists of R power R power I and uh, and uh, R power I times S, yeah, and uh, I is between one and N, if you like, yeah. <clears throat> and um, uh, there are relations, yeah. So it's generated by R and S. R power n must be identity, and S square must be identity, and we have that Rs must be SR inverse. Yeah, so these are the relations. So to check that um, phi k extends to a group homomorphism, what will I do? I'll uh, what I'll do is I'll send. Um, yeah, so maybe you can write it as R. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess I've used uh, S R power i instead of R power i s. So let's just do that and J I've used because you know, I is the complex uh, uh, square root of one. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll stick to J. So let's 
so r power r power j and s r power j and j between zero and ten. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just assign s r power j the matrix s times r k power j. Yeah. So p k depends upon this number k. Yeah. Uh, k is some number between zero and uh, n, and uh, it will give you uh, these. Uh, uh, so if I define it, so so one has to check that it satisfies this relation. So I have to check that uh, p of p k of s r power j is same as uh, p k of s r inverse. Sorry, P K of S R is same as P K of S R inverse. So I have to check this identity holds. P K of R power N is going by definition. I mean, uh, this thing, the first two conditions are satisfied automatically because you know, uh, R K power N is just the identity matrix, yeah, and S square is also identity matrix. So the first two are automatic. We check that P K extends to a, a homomorphism from. Uh, dn to gl2c all you have to check is that rk times s is same as s times rk inverse yeah so so let's do that so what is rk times s rk is this diagonal matrix s is this so uh, so the left hand side basically uh, um, if you want to multiply it you just multiply the corresponding rows yeah so you get uh, um, s0 E power, uh, e power minus 2 pi i k over n, and then the second uh, column is e power 2 pi i k over n and 0. And the right, right hand side is also this uh, the same thing, yeah? S times r k inverse, because r k inverse is just you put minus k here. Yeah? Uh, so this is this is minus k, and this is this is uh, this becomes plus. Yeah? So so once you verify that. Uh, so once you verify this identity, that tells you that Fk extends to a group homomorphism from dn to gl2c. Is this okay? Yes, guys? Yes, sir. Yeah. Any questions so far? So, so we have given... Um, n plus one, yeah, for k equals zero to n, we get n plus one representations of dn, two dimensional representations, yeah. So of course, uh, we have done, uh, so of course, all of them can't be distinct, yeah. Uh, and, and certainly can't be, all, all of them can't be irreducible or distinct because otherwise we would have produced too many. We, we should get uh, n over two minus one and n minus one over two, depending upon whether n is even or odd. So, uh, but let's try to calculate the character first, yeah? So once we know what each of these matrices look like, then computing the character is easy. So if you want to compute phi k of r power j, that is, uh, you just have to raise uh, this, r, this matrix r k to the jth power and add them up, yeah? Add the diagonal entries. So that is precisely this guy, which is um, uh, two times cosine two pi k, j over n, yeah? Uh, but uh, cosine 2 pi k j over n is same as cosine 2 pi n minus k j over n, yeah? That also one should remember, okay? And uh, and if you look at s times r, j, r power j, so there are two kinds of element, r power j and s times r power j. These are all the elements in the end. So s times r power j, we, we already calculated. Yeah. Uh, so, in fact, what we calculated it is s power r k inverse. Yeah. So there, there the diagonal entries are zero. Okay. So, uh, so, so even if you do r s times r power j, the diagonal entries will still be zero. Okay. So, so that tells you that the trace must be zero, and hence uh, chi phi k of s r power j is, is indeed uh, indeed zero. Okay. So, so what? Uh, so now, what does this identity tell us? That phi k and phi n minus k, they have the same character. Yeah. So phi n minus k and phi k, uh, the values of these two characters are same. Okay. So that tells you that the two representation must be same. So as soon as the characters are same, the representations are same. Yeah. 
So we uh, so already we uh, from n plus one. Uh, so from n plus one, we got some some of them are same. Yeah. So we get uh, from zero to n over two. So maybe we are doing the even case. Yeah. Maybe so. So let's uh, let's think of the even case from here. Yeah. So n even. So from here n even. So if n is even, then phi k from zero to n over two are distinct two-dimensional representations. Yeah, because the characters are now different. Yeah. So if you take zero, you'll get some uh, some representation. And in fact, what do you get if you take k equals zero? What is phi zero? Phi zero will send R to identity. Identity. So uh, so it sends R to identity and S to a flip. Yeah. So uh, that tells you that uh, I mean this representation phi zero uh, is a is a is a uh, yeah so phi zero is some special kind of uh, representation. Okay. So so it will be reducible representation phi zero and uh, 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 and uh, even if you put n equals n over two of phi of phi sub n over two, yeah? Then uh, what you get is, uh, so if you put n over two, then uh, uh, this is cosine two pi, yeah? If you get, put k equals n over two, then, uh, and j equals one, then it, it gives you cosine pi, which is again minus one or something. Cosine pi is again zero, yeah? So, so it is, uh, so what happens is uh, phi zero and phi n over two are, are reducible representations because phi n over two r power j is uh, basically two times minus one power j. And, uh, and this you can see is, uh, so remember uh, this C1 and this, and this one dimensional representations, we had written it down. So you can check that uh, yeah, and this two-dimensional uh, character is just the sum of C1 and C3, okay? So chi of phi n over two is C1 plus C3. And similarly, phi zero you can show is uh, C, C0 and C2. And it's ca character of phi zero, the same as C0 and C2. So, so that's another, uh, so this is what I've written here, yeah? So phi, uh, so phi, these two representations, phi zero and phi n over two are reducible. So if you remove those two, then what you get is n, n over two minus one, yeah? One, two, n over two minus one irreducible representation. So we get uh, n over two minus one irredus distinct irreducible two dimensional representation. And those representations are explicit. I've told you what the representation is, and we also have computed all the characters. Yeah, so that compute uh, completes the story in the even dimensional case. Okay, and the same thing you can do in the odd dimensional case. Yeah, so in the odd dimensional case, what happens will be uh, so. Remember, phi k and phi n minus k are same. Yeah, so that tells you that uh, phi zero and phi n are same, and they are. Uh, yeah, and uh, one can show that phi zero and phi n are reducible. Yeah, phi zero, which is same as phi n, is reducible, and it is uh, it is given by. So in 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 odd dimension case, there are two one dimensional representation. Yeah, c zero and c two. So you can show that phi zero is sum of these two irreducible representations. And then the in the uh, and among the other ones, uh, you have that uh, pairing. Yeah, phi k is same as phi n minus k. So there are phi one to phi two to phi n minus one over two irreducible representation. Phi one is same as phi n minus one. Phi two is same as phi n minus two, and so on. Yeah? And uh, these are all distinct two-dimensional irreducible representation. And you can also and uh, the characters also we have computed according to this. Yeah. So that that is the whole story about uh, about the n. Yeah. So, I have, so for dihedral groups, I have given you all the irreducible representation. I have also told you what the characters look like. Yeah. So in fact, I have told you what is the value of the character for each. 
each element of the group. So, uh, so the study based on conjugacy classes will be done um, done in the afternoon. But uh, this this gives you all the irreducible representations of TN. Is this clear? Uh, are there some questions on this before I move on? Hello, sir. Yeah. So, as you can see, if if the group is uh, well understood, or you understand the group, you can write down all the representations. Uh, fail, uh, um, I mean, uh, it's not very easy, but uh, uh, one can one can do it. Yeah. So here, for instance, we use the fact that DN acts on C two. Yeah. So some somehow um, the representation is there. Yeah? One one class of representation is there, and that is what we use to get all this. Okay. So so the last yes, thing. Sir. Yes. Yeah, here actually we have dealt regarding uh, one dimensional and two dimensional representation of DN. Yeah. So, in a similar fashion, can we work for higher dimensions also? Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, there won't be any higher dimensional irreducible representation. Yeah. <coughs> so, I told you the only, the only irreducible representations of DNs are one dimensional and two dimensional. Yeah, 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 yes. So now if you want to study any other dimension, say five-dimensional irreducible representation, you want to list them out, then it has to be direct sum of these irreducible representations. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You yeah. can write down all of them, for instance. Yeah. And so on. Any other any other questions or comments? So my question is that there do exist irreducible representations of order greater than two, but, but that might be for some other groups, not for D, DN. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So for DN, there are no uh, uh, two-dimensional representation, but, uh, uh, but for other example? groups. So for can you can you give an example? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I, yeah, for instance, A4, you will see that there is a three-dimensional irreducible representation, but in general, you can take SN. Yeah. So, so this SN has irreducible, uh, many, I mean, if you change N, if you go make N bigger and bigger, you can get many irreducible representation. Okay, and uh, now the dimension of, uh, uh, so number of irreducible representations of SN are, um, uh, yeah, so it, uh, there is a combinatorial de description of irreducible representations of SN, which is given by young Pablo, okay? So, um, and, uh, um, and those, uh, and you can also compute uh, the dimensions of those representations. So I can't do the general theory, but uh, just uh, uh, so I, because uh, there's not enough time. But, uh, but if you take SN, then uh, you can get, uh, get many. So uh, one way to get, <coughs> get it explicitly is you look at the permutation representation of SN, like we did in S3. <coughs> And if you remove this, uh, the trivial part, like we did here, then the remaining thing happens to be irreducible. <coughs> and that will, that will give you an n minus one dimensional irreducible representation. Okay. Oh, um, but, uh, yes. Actually, in the case of SN, we have found that the only possible irreducible representations could be of the dimension uh, two and one. That is for S3. Yeah, S3, yes. But for DN, we did not say anything regarding that. Its irreducible representation could be of one or two. Yeah, it Am I right? Be, yeah, one and one or two for DN. Uh, how, how, how do you say that? So, uh, so I told you that uh, DN has a subgroup uh, of order N, yeah? Yeah. Uh, which, is, which, is, which is cyclic, in particular abelian. Yeah, 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 yeah. So its index in DN is two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then I told you this result, that if you can find an abelian subgroup of index 
uh, index, uh, some index, then the irreducible representations, uh, the dimension of the irreducible representations are bounded by that. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it, okay. yes. yes. So that tells you uh, that it can be at most two, okay. So that that result maybe I'll do it today or 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 maybe in the last class, okay. Or in the in the afternoon that is. And so there you'll have a self-contained thing, yeah. So so it, now for S N, as I said, uh, there is a bijection between irreducible representation and some combinatorial thing. So that those are called uh, uh, young tableaus, but uh, but. Uh, um, but this particular this uh, this permutation representation has a trivial subrepresentation, and you look at uh, you quotient out by the trivial subrepresentation. What you get is a uh, is actually an irreducible representation, and that has dimension n minus one. Okay, <clears throat> but it has many more many more irreducible representation of even higher dimension if you take n larger. Yeah, so but for that you'll have to study um, study this. Uh, uh, representations of SN, which is not too bad. I mean, after after this course, you can you can go on to that thing. So uh, maybe in, at the end of uh, uh, towards the end, maybe in the afternoon, I'll share some uh, a link for some videos where I've taught this course, and there we we actually did this bijection between representations of SN and Young Tableau. So so you can go through those lectures if you're interested and uh, and uh, see for yourself okay so let's do this uh, uh, one more example which is alternating group a4 okay and uh, and maybe then we will uh, we'll see what to do okay so so irreducible representations of a4 so somehow a4 uh, uh, is uh, is another uh, non abelian group and it's not too too off, meaning not too complicated. So what are the elements of A4? So you have to look at even permutations in S4, yeah? So, uh, so even permutations in S4 means uh, you can take identity, identity is even permutation. You can't take transpositions, yeah? Because that's odd permutation, but you can take product of two transpositions. So one, two times three, four, two, three times one, four, one, three times two, four. So these are, uh, these are all uh, odd permutations. Uh, these are all uh, uh, even permutations, and then you, uh, it contains all the three cycles. Yeah, and uh, you can compute how many three cycles are there. So it has to be eight. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. So I, you choose four, choose three. Yeah, so four choose three is uh, four times uh, four times three, twelve over. Uh, so you need three numbers to make a make a permutation. So somehow you you, you four times three uh, four choose three is is what four times three over uh, over uh, four. is four yeah. So there are four uh, uh, four so you get there are four elements yeah and for uh, uh, four four sets of three elements uh, and uh, with three uh, so from one two three you can make two three cycles one two three and three two one yeah so there are total eight three cycles okay so a4 has uh, you know four factorial over two elements which is same as uh, uh, i don't know 12 elements and these are the 12 elements here okay and we can compute all the conjugacy classes so identity is one of the conjugacy classes and uh, uh, then uh, uh, then these uh, these uh, three three elements one two three uh, times three four so the product of two transpositions this forms a, a two disjoint transposition this forms a conjugacy class as well which we which I'm denoting it by C zero this set of three conjugacy classes and the set of three cycles in S four are all conjugate. But when you are looking at A4, they become and they become two disjoint. Uh, yeah, and they they split into two conjugacy classes. Yeah, um, 
Uh, so uh, uh, those two conjugacy classes, I call it C1 and C2. So you can check that one, two, three. Uh, it contain one of the conjugacy class will contain one, two, three. The other will contain three, two, one because one, two, three, and three, two, one are not conjugates. Okay, in A4, they are conjugates in S4, but they are not conjugates in A4. So these are the two. Uh, so uh, you can take these as representatives of C1 and C2. Okay. So there are four conjugacy classes in A4. So that tells us that there are four irreducible representations of A4. Okay. So let's try to figure out all the four irreducible representations of A4. So the first observation is that uh, this A4, A4, so A4 has four irreducible representation, uh, and this this subset E and uh, the, these uh, these a product of disjoint transposition, this subset H is actually a subgroup of A4 um, because, you know, if you multiply these two, you'll still land in this thing. Yeah? In fact, it's a normal normal subgroup yeah? because I mean, you are taking union of conjugacy classes. So, of course, if you conjugate H by anything, it, you'll land in here. Yeah? So, H is a normal subgroup of A4 and if you quotient it out, which group will you get? A4 mod H? You'll get it has three elements, so it, 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 yeah. yeah, so it's, it has three elements, and there is only one group of order three, yeah, which is Z mod three Z. So E4 mod H is isomorphic to Z mod three Z. Yeah. So that, then uh, uh, computing its, its some of its irreducible representation becomes easy. Yeah. So there is a homomorphism, a surjective homomorphism from A4 to Z mod three Z. Yeah. So if you take any any one any it, it, one dimensional representation of Z mod three Z, then it's also a representation of A four, yeah, by this uh, this group homomorphism theta. Yeah, and since this is subjective, this will tell you that if you take in distinct uh, irreducible homomorphism, then uh, uh, distinct uh, representation of Z mod 3 Z, then it will give you distinct irreducible representation of A4. Okay, so this may be, uh, this I think is also a homework problem from what I recollect. So this I made uh, last evening. So so maybe this a uh, uh, general result to this effect will be shown um, by Arunava. Yeah. So if you have a, group, a subjective group of homomorphism from G to G prime, then every Every irreducible representation of G prime is also an irreducible representation of G by this homomorphism. Yeah. So see, uh, you have this homomorphism theta to Z mod 3Z. If I take a representation of G3, that is a homomorphism from Z mod 3Z to GL of some V. Yeah. So if you compose it, you get a group homomorphism from A4 to GL of V. So that leads to a representation. And the assertion is that if, uh, if the original one, if this map theta is subjective, then this uh, this representation is irreducible if the uh, if the representation of Z mod T C is irreducible. Okay. So so as I said, this is homework. Okay. So and how many irreducible representation does Z mod T C have? So this we saw. Oh. No, it can't be four, yeah? Z mod three. Three. three, yeah? It has, it's, it's an abelian group, so it has exactly as many irreducible representation as the number of elements. And we saw exactly what they are, yeah? So one is the trivial, the other one you send, uh, um, I don't know, one to uh, one bar to uh, uh, maybe um, uh, on this, uh, uh, a cube root of unity, uh, one cube root of an, uh, unity, and the other, the third one is you send it to the conjugate of the cube root of unity. That's the second complex cube root of unity. Yeah? So these are the three, three representations you get, three one-dimensional representation of irreducible representation of Z mod three C you get. Yeah? So that tells you that A4 has three distinct one-dimensional irreducible representation. Yeah? So out of these four irreducible representation, three of them are one dimensional. So what is the dimension of the fourth irreducible representation? 
So that we can now calculate, yeah? Uh, it should be three. It should be three, yeah, because, um, yeah, so I've written down these three uh, characters of these three one-dimensional irreducible representation of Z mod 3Z. And from here, you can get the characters of, uh, uh, so you'll get these three irreducible representations of A4 and its character. So C theta one is a trivial, C theta two of identity is one, C theta two of C zero is one, and so on. And uh, the third representation must be, must be of, uh, of dimension three, okay? Because uh, one, uh, so maybe I'll just write it down here. Yeah, somehow this writing has gone. I'm not able to write. Let me just try again. So I don't know why it acts funny. Yeah, so one. So you are not saving this. Yeah, but I'm not even able to write, so it doesn't. Um, one second, let me just try the other package. Let's see. Let me share. Sorry. <coughs> okay, I can't still write. But anyway, <coughs> hopefully it's it's okay. So the number of irreducible representations are four. Three of them are one dimensional. So one plus one plus one plus A square, the dimension of the remaining irreducible representation must be the size of the group, which we saw is exactly 12. <coughs> so that tells you that uh, A square must be nine. So A must be three. So the remaining representation has uh, dimension three. Yeah. And then we can calculate uh, the character of that uh, remaining representation. Okay, this is acting just too funny. Sorry. I may have to, yeah, there's not much time, so I'll, I'll not restart. Yeah. Okay, so, so I still can't write, but, uh, but you can see this. So this is three dimensional and then you use the other formula. Yeah. So one plus one plus one plus uh, three times this number should be zero. Yeah. So that tells you that this number must be minus one. Yeah. So this number must be minus one, and then one plus omega plus omega square plus this number times t must be uh, zero. But one plus omega plus omega square we already know is uh, is zero. Yeah. The value of this uh, uh, and this other two characters are this. Yeah. So chi one of one bar is one, chi two of one bar is omega, chi three of one bar is omega square. So once you know what is uh, what it does on on these things, then you know what it on three cycles. Then uh, you know you know this character complete. So the so the character table looks like three minus one zero and zero. Yeah, the character for chi four. Okay, so that is the remaining uh, uh, third ir irreducible representation. Yeah, which is three dimensional. And this character is given by chi four. 
Okay, so the so, so, entry three in the first column corresponding to E for five four. Yeah. Why is this entry three? Can you please explain? This is the dimension dimension of the representation. Yeah. So chi four of E is the dimension of the representation, and we argued that that's three dimensional, right? Oh yeah. So that is how you get this three. And the other entries you get it by evaluating at uh, at uh, these these different elements. Is that okay? Yes, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so you get the character for the character of this missing three-dimensional irreducible representation. The only thing we need is that uh, what is this three-dimensional irreducible representation? Then our study will be complete. Yeah. So again, what we do is uh, we look at we we study the regular representation of S four. Yeah. This not regular. This permutation representation of S four. And uh, so it is a C, its representation is C4. So, uh, so if you think of, of A4, A4 is a subgroup. So, so it's a group, of, there is a group of morphism, if you like. Or uh, this is called, uh, so A4 is also, will also act on C4. Yeah? So this, this is a representation of C4 as well. Uh, the, it's a representation of A4 as well. And of course, there is a, uh, there is a trivial piece. Yeah, which is uh, one, uh, the diagonal representation is the one dimensional uh, trivial representation. Okay, so, so if you remove that, then my claim is that, uh, so, so, so this V, v is, a, is a representation of A4 and it, and, uh, it contains one dimension, sorry, not V, this C4. C4 is a, representation of A4 and it contains V, this one dimensional representation as a sub representation. Yeah, and V is the trivial representation of A4. So all I have to do is, uh, is and the, the complementary dimensional representation, complementary representation, which, uh, which is basically Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, such that the sum is zero, yeah? like, like in the S3. That's a three dimensional representation. And it's a sub representation. Uh, uh, that's a three dimen dimensional vector subspace of C4. And it's a sub representation. So it is, it is a sub representation of A4. It's a sub representation of S4 as well, but also A4. Now you just compute the character of that uh, sub representation by the same trick. Yeah? So we know the uh, represent a character of the permutation representation. So, so uh, that, I mean, uh, on identity, it will take value four. On, uh, uh, so C zero consists of two, product of two transpositions, yeah? So if you think about the transposition, uh, product of two transpositions, it, it's a permutation which doesn't leave anything fixed. Yeah, this one, two will interchange one, two, and three, four will interchange three, four, yeah? So no, the, on the action of uh, this doesn't leave any po point fixed. So the character, uh, the value of the character uh, is zero for the permutation representation, the C4. C4 is the permutation representation, yeah? So on C, C0, the value is zero. On C1, C1 is a three cycle, yeah? So one, two, three. So it will leave one of the, one of the elements fixed the, uh, in this, uh, the action of uh, this one, two, three, four, uh, this, this cycle, three cycle, one, two, three on, on the set one, two, three, four will leave four fixed, yeah? So, so and this number is exactly one and uh, same with C2. C2 consists of uh, three cycles as well. So, so this, uh, this character is again one, yeah? So on these, uh, these four conjugacy classes, the um, the character of this permutation representation you have figured it out yeah so now just subtract uh, subtract uh, the character for the trivial representation then what do you get you get 3 minus 1 0 0 which is precisely this character 3 minus 1 0 0 yeah so that tells you that uh, this complementary dimensional uh, complementary representation to this thing is is indeed the is indeed uh, has the same character as this irreducible character and has must be an irreducible representation. Yeah? 
So W, this, this is called the standard representation, by the way, uh, this complementary dimensional representation. So it's a standard representation of S4 and also of A4, yeah? So, so we get that uh, chi W is same as chi 4, and hence uh, this is the remaining irreducible representation, okay? So I guess, uh, uh, so I hope uh, this makes, uh, so, so at the end I couldn't uh, point out everything, but uh, in, because the pointer was not working, but I hope uh, uh, you have understood, yeah? The representation, so I gave you all the irreducible representations of A4 as well, and I showed you it's not too difficult to compute. Yeah. Is that okay? Any any questions? Hello, sir. I have one question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sir. Can you repeat the argument why why in the case of A4 there is only one uh, three-dimensional irreducible representation? Ah, huh, yeah, sure. So A4 has four conjugacy classes. Yeah. Is that right? So we proved that. Yeah, these are the four conjugacy classes of. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? There are four conjugacy classes. Ah. So there are only four irreducible representations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. And three of them are uh, one-dimensional uh, because one -dimensional. of the quotient group. Actually. Yeah. So there is only one remaining irreducible representation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we just have to calculate its dimension. Yeah. Yes. So yes. we use this formula. Uh, the first formula which we saw today. Um, this formula. Um, size of G is same as N1 square plus N2 square plus N3 square plus N4 square. Yeah. So N1, N2, N2, N2 yes. N3 so is one. One, yeah. one, 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 three. And oh, oh yeah, that is three. Actually. N4 square is, uh, is then uh, nine. Yeah, yes. 12 minus 3 is 9. So you get N4 must be 3. So that is how you get that it must be three dimensional. Oh, okay. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Sir, the same argument can be said in the other way also, 